Hello and welcome to Revision Tips for SIPS Level 2 Certificate in Procurement and Supply Operations. This is Module 2 which is Procurement and Supply Operations and Learning Outcome 1. This will help you know the different types of organisations and how they operate. So let's start by looking at production organisations or otherwise known as manufacturers. They provide tangible items, something that you can see or touch such as engines, computers or food. They make products on a shop floor in large volumes. They hold inventory and it's easy to measure quality. Products can be patented, for example only Apple can make an iPhone. And you often see OEMs, which is Original Equipment Manufacturers, who's an organisation whose goods are used as components within products offered by another company. So let's look at the workflow in a production organisation. They receive an order. Procurement team order the raw materials. Those raw materials are received and booked into the company's inventory. Staff receive training on how to manufacture the order correctly and to the desired lead time. Products are manufactured. This could include many processes and people. And then they're checked to ensure they are good quality. The products are then put into stores or sent on to their customers. Now we can look at service organisations. They provide intangible items, which is something you cannot physically touch and therefore don't have inventory. Service organisations react to the needs of their customers, providing bespoke services like the tailored to individual needs. So for example, a taxi driver arrives when you order it and takes you where you want to go. Quality is harder to measure. How do you judge if something is clean, for example? And services are easy to copy. Anyone can provide a car washing service. Let's look at the workflow of a service organisation. The service organisation receives a call from a customer. They react to that call and arrange to deliver the service. The service is undertaken for the customer. So naturally a much shorter process flow than a production organisation. So, which one of these is a product and which one of these is a service? Shoes, laptops, dry cleaning, insurance, downloadable music, or a mobile phone contract. Let's now look at the different types of organisations. This is to do with how they're owned and how they're operated. So we have public sector, the private sector and the third sector. Public sector are service organisations. They provide education, emergency services, military and municipal services and universal healthcare in some countries such as the United Kingdom, Singapore and China. Public sector organisations are funded by taxes from the public. So they have many stakeholders and come under scrutiny to make sure money is spent well. Services need to be at the highest standard, meet excellent ethical standards as well, and be kind to the environment. Private sector organisations can be production or service organisations. They sell anything from clothing and furniture to downloadable music or business consultancies. They range from as small as a micro independent company to large multinationals. There are two main types of private sector organisations. PLCs, private limited companies, sorry, public limited companies. They float on the stock exchange like Tesco's, Sky, McDonald's. Whereas the ones with LTD at the end are private limited companies. They can have shares and up to 50 shareholders, but they can't float their shares on the stock exchange. 
So they're likely to be small market traders, business consultants. Then the third sector organisations, also known as TSOs or not-for-profits. Again, they're service organisations where their objective is to benefit the community and enrich society by improving social situations like welfare or ethical behaviour. Good examples are cancer research and homeless shelters. So let's look at who they're owned by. Public sector, government, private sector, investors, third sector, the public. How are they funded? Public sector is through taxes, private sector through investment and loans, and the third sector rely on voluntary donations. The only one of those that has shares is the private sector. And the only one that floats are the PLCs, public limited companies. Both the public and the third sector are trying to help citizens and do some good, whereas private sector is objective is to make a profit. They're internally um, legislated by the government if you're public sector and volunteers for the third sector, but by its own business in the private sector. And the benefits for public sector is job security and pensions. Good wages and bonuses for the private sector and helping a good cause in the third sector. Now, organisations can be structured in a number of different ways. They can be formal or informal. A formal organisation is structured, planned and well organised. Public, private or third organisations such as schools, farms and charities are likely to be formal. They are usually legal entities. Everyone knows their role and the level of authority they have within the organisation. Informal organisations are less structured. So for example, a running club or an online forum of like-minded individuals. They're not likely to be separate legal entities. And they might not only be set up for a short space of time. If you look at the diagrams on the slide now, we're looking at the difference between a flat structure and a tall structure. In a flat structure, you have few or no levels of management. Workers have more responsibility, but no direct go-to person, as there are fewer managers. In a tall structure, it often looks like a pyramid. Everyone has somebody to report to, except for the person at the top. And there are clear roles, but more levels, which can hamper communication. So think about what type of structure is in place in your organisation. In terms of objectives, organisations have different overall focuses, depending on the sector that they operate in. So the public sector exists to help people. The private sector exists to make profit and third sector organisations exist to benefit society. But within each sector, different organisations will have their own objectives, such as survival, growth and increasing profits. Their objectives will change over time as their market and their position within it changes. But all the objectives need to be smart, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant and time bound. A mission statement explains the organisation's business and the reason it exists, as well as its goals. It defines the aims and the ways it intends to reach its objectives. For example, Starbucks states our mission to inspire and nurture the human spirit. One person, one cup, one neighbourhood at a time. A vision statement is a statement of where an organisation would like to get to in the future. So an example could be Caterpillar's vision statement. They want to be the global leader in customer value. So perhaps take some time to find out the mission and vision statements of three different companies, perhaps a public sector, a private sector and a third sector organisation. Then think about the similarities and differences between them. Do they reference their product and service? Are there similarities between organisations with similar sectors? 
And what do they reveal about the company's focus? What impact can this have on its employees? So within each organisation, each employee has a set of objectives which will trickle down from the mission and vision statements. And to repeat what I've said before, objectives should be smart so they can be measured. So specific, make the objective specific. Measurable, make sure the objective is measurable so you can see where you are today and where you are in the future. It has to be achievable, so don't make it unachievable. It has to be rele relevant and tie into the goals of your organisation. And time bound, so say within the next 12 months. Objectives will feed into the organisation's overall objectives, but it also enables the individual to see how they can contribute to the organisation's success. Employees also need to be motivated and we need these motivating and hygiene factors in place, which comes from a theorist Hertzberg. He said there are two factors that contribute towards employees being happy at work. We have motivating factors and hygiene factors. The motivating factors look for challenging work, recognition, a sense of involvement and responsibility. Whereas the hygiene factors look for things like working conditions, the pay, the policies and relationships. Now, any organisation will have some typical functions that you might see. So the production or operations is responsible for the production of goods in a particular organisation. Marketing is responsible for brand identity, promoting the business through its website and printed literature. Sales is responsible for visiting clients and generating orders. Customer support, responsible for resolving customer queries in a timely and professional manner. Human resources is responsible for managing people, recruitment and training, as well as payroll. Finance, responsible for the organisation's budgets and expenditure. And IT, ensuring that systems are appropriate, that they work and remain safe and secure. Technical functions are responsible for providing specialist knowledge in support of production. So an example could be quality assurance or engineering. Procurement, responsible for sourcing and ordering goods and services and managing suppliers. And research and development is responsible for designing new products and services. So why is it important for procurement to understand all of its business functions? Organisations can develop in, and function in two different ways. They can either decide to be different so it's an, a strategy known as differentiation, where each department has their own set of rules or ways of working and may have a different culture from the rest of the business. Minimal interaction happens between the departments. Or we can go for integration, where all departments are aligned in terms of rules, policies and strategies. Different departments are likely to work together closely. Thanks for watching.